It's another moment when we meet at Jesus' feet to share from his word. We want to thank God that he has preserved you and he has given you this opportunity for you to tune in. And also by you tuning in to our Hope Channel programs, we are so blessed to have you. And as always, we tell you, share that channel with a friend, with a neighbor, with, with a colleague, and also encourage them to check on our YouTube channels for this and many other archived programs. Today, we want to look at the Sabbath rest how should we experience sabbath rest and of course uh, how can we practically say that today if i honored sabbath then this is what i've gained out of it in other words is god's sabbath an anti-stress program to you or it's one of the most burdensome day of the week those that are going to help us to understand how to um, rest on a sabbath are our brothers mraithi kindly say hi to the viewer uh, my dear brothers and sisters, our fellow candidates of heaven, we thank God for this opportunity that we are here again, that we may eat and dine together, mm -hmm. indeed to taste and to see that the Lord indeed is good. Amen and amen. God is always good and mm -hmm. so thank you so much for that. Mm -hmm. uh, pastor, we are always honored to have you in this studio. Mm -hmm. And again, being a pastor, you will help us to know how to rest on a Sabbath. Say hi to the viewer. Thank you for having me. Uh, praise the Lord viewer. Thank you for sitting to watch this program and to study the bible together feel very welcome at the presence at the feet of jesus amen and amen kindly brother charles put mm. us in the word the okay prayer. let us pray thank you god our heavenly father for giving us this opportunity again we and all our viewers that are with us at home lord we thank you for this opportunity may your holy presence your holy angels and holy spirit guide us and direct us here lord and even in our homes so that father we may hear and understand the word and this we pray, believing and trusting in Jesus' name. Amen, amen and amen. We want to talk about Sabbath to those who are Sabbath keepers, the seventh day of the week, and even to those that are, do not know it, so that then they are able to know it and appreciate what it is. We go and draw our first text from the book of uh, Genesis chapter 2, verses 1 to 3. And as I read, the pastor, you'll help us to start putting into, into perspective why God saw it necessary mm. to create Sabbath. And they give it unto us as a gift from the very beginning. Mm -hmm. Genesis chapter 2 verses number 1 to 3. Your Bible will tell you that thus the heavens and the earth and all the host of heaven were finished. Yes. And on the seventh day God ended his work which he had done. And he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had done. Then God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it because in it he rested from all his work which God had created and made. Three things, Pastor, I see here that on this day when God had finished his six days of work, on the seventh day he finished that work. Number two, on this very day he rested. Number three, he sanctified this day and he blessed this day. He set it apart for making it holy for his own use. And yes, now today here we are still talking about Sabbath. The world has not adequately embraced Sabbath fully. Help us to understand why God had to create it in the first place before now we go to see how do we then rest in it. Uh, thank you, Elder. It's true that in God creating man mm -hmm. in his own image, he was establishing a kingdom mm -hmm. after his own likeness. You're right. He resides in heaven. And also he is able, like uh, the book of Isaiah says, to come and, uh, and tabernacle with us. Mm. So in creating man in his own image, God wanted to make people who can worship him or to establish a kingdom that is after his own likeness. Now we see that uh, after creating Adam and Eve and placing them in the Garden of Eden, he knew what is best for them. Mm. He tells them, uh, gives them the privilege of tilling the land and making it productive. Yes. Yeah. Not tilling in the word of it, but tendering, if yes. I may say, because there was no labor before sin. And in this, he wanted them to also interact with the animals. You mm -hmm. see that mm. he is giving them the animals to name them and, yes. and, and, and interact with them. Mm. So Being like a co-creator yeah, yes. of that level. So he is not uh, establishing man as an isolated being. He wants him to relate with the environment mm. and with, um, with the other be created uh, beings yes. and establish an environment that is friendly and healthy for, for man 
to dwell in. Mm, mm. So in giving them Sabbath as a weekly reminder of his relationship with them yes. and with the other people, mm -hmm. that is environment, and even human beings and animals, yes. he is intending to create mm -hmm. a healthy environment or a healthy uh, situation for man to thrive. Yes. And God in his wisdom and to keep it constant, he gives them a specific day so that mm -hmm. they can form a routine. Yes. And as you alluded to, th there's a possibility sometimes of um, us asking the question, should it be a specific day? Yes. The Bible is very categorical that on the seventh day, yes. yeah, mm -hmm. like you, you read in, 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 in Genesis, in Genesis yes. that on the seventh day, so it was supposed to be a specific, a specific day mm -hmm. that God set and he did the three things that you mentioned. Yes. He sanctified, mm -hmm. he set, he, 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 he blessed, blessed, and he set mm -hmm. his apart. apart. Yes. So when we are also uh, resting, we are also fellowshipping with our creator. You're right. So it's a moment also to fellowship with one another and also fellowship with God. Amen. And in fellowship, we become reignited, we become re rejuvenated, we yes. become strengthened in the areas where we could be failing mm. in our life. And that's why in our, in our study, the key text that is given yes. uh, uh, um, the, in the, the book of Leviticus chapter 23, mm -hmm. he says, six days shall thou work, shall the work be done. But on the seventh day is a Sabbath of solemn rest. You're right. It is a holy convocation. Solemn rest. Yes. And that's what we want to dwell on today. Yes, then. Precisely. How do we rest? How, on do, you that re day? how do you rest? Yes. yes. Now, and he's giving further that mm. it is not solemn rest of, of sleeping. Mm. Yeah. Of course, in this era of, um, of uh, the COVID era, there's a lot of uh, people staying at home. Mm. And we, we might miss the holy convocation. Mm. Because the lesson is also saying it is a solemn rest and a holy convocation. Mm. That is, the, there should be a, a place where we are meeting. Yes to celebrate together mm, mm, mm. or there should be a, a ceremony mm. that that we are having as church or a service together yes. not resting in uh mm. in, in your in your house so finding this rest can only be when we are connecting ourselves with god who is the creator mm. who knows has and yes. knows what is good for us. You're right. Mm -hmm. So thank you so much. Uh, uh, Brother Charles, as you come in, I also want to pick a few things and then now you, we, we start looking at how it is a gift from God. Mm -hmm. Because then, uh, as you know, and as you're going to help us understand, mm -hmm. From the very beginning, God has created it, and over the generations, He has always ensured that there are unique markers uh, that sets this day apart. Remember, even when they are collecting manna, He tells them on on like on a, on a, on the sixth day, just collect for two days. The people who could still wake up in the morning on Sabbath to go and uh, look for manna, and there are those ones, um, and we know all those things that are normally happen even up to today. But I want to tell a viewer from. Um, uh, a few texts that number one sabbath reminds us of the creation and the creator himself Precisely. so that then we get to know that this day is not just our day it's not a day just uh, uh, like any other day it's a day that comes from god sabbath reminds us of salvation and the savior sabbath is a sign of our sanctification and relationship with god sabbath is a sign of the covenant between god and his people sabbath is also uh, has this future dimension and then of course and uh, Brother Charles now help us. Sabbath is a wonderful gift of God through which uh, we can experience rest, time for reflection, fellowship with others, and especially with God. Mm -hmm. How can we do that in this generation that is so busy, mm -hmm. that does not even have, uh, that we are now thinking Sabbath is interfering with our work programs? Uh, actually, the preparation for Sabbath should begin on uh, the first day of the week on Sunday, mm. so that uh -huh. we are prepared uh, all the way to the sixth day on Friday, so that at Sabbath comes, you are actually ready. You're mm. right. The Sabbath itself is holy. Remember the Sabbath. The God has made it holy, as you have actually read. He made <coughs> it holy, set it apart, blessed it, sanctify it. So for us to properly keep the Sabbath, we ourselves must be what? Must be holy. That is why we are saying the preparation on Sabbath must begin from the first day of the week. You are living a holy and a righteous life, mm. doing the things that God requires. So that now as you enter into the holy hours of the Sabbath, you are not entering as a sinner. 
you're not entering as a person that is crooked and full of all manner of shoddy things. Eh? You're entering as a person who is holy, uh, as the Sabbath itself is holy, mm. sins that have been forgiven. Mm. And I wish also to highlight the key verse, a holy con convocation. There's a question I met. Mm. Where is it written in the Bible that people on Sabbath must uh, go to church or gather a congregation somewhere in the same way that pastor has actually emphasized mm. that rest does not mean now you stay in your blankets the whole day on Sabbath mm. sleeping, yeah? So this but was... sleeping is also important. Yes, at the right time. <laughs> there is time for everything, yes. <laughs> so this, uh, this Leviticus 23 verse 3 yes. is actually the answer to that question. So convocation for those of us that uh, have not English at the, as their first language actually means it is a large formal gathering assembly of people, a congregation. Oh, yeah. So that is what a convocation means. Thank so on you. Sabbath is the day for gathering, is the day for the congregation, is the day for us to come together, is the day for us to be in church, and Christ himself led by example. Mm. When you read Luke 4, 16, yes. it actually says, and Christ came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up. Mm. And as his custom was on mm. the Sabbath, he went yeah, to gather with the other people. You're right. Yeah? And he took the book of Isaiah to actually read, mm. where it is actually written, the spirit of the Lord is upon me and so on. Paul himself in the Salonica, mm -hmm. when you read the book of Acts chapter 17, verse 1 and 2, it says on for three days, three Sabbaths, yeah, Paul actually gathered together with the other Jews mm. uh, that, uh, that were at the Salonica, yes. and they actually gathered in regards to the Sabbath. At Philippi, Paul and Silas, they gathered at the river. Where right. we have this other lady that was called uh, Salome mm -hmm. or something. Yeah. So Sabbath is the day for us to rest and it's the day for us to... But why do we rest? The reason why we rest on Sabbath is because the God that we worship, mm -hmm. he himself rested. Yes. You know, Christians means people who are like Christ. Mm -hmm. So the God that we follow, we must be like him. So that's why we wish to read the book of Acts, uh, sorry, the book of Hebrews. Eh? Mm -hmm. The book of Hebrews chapter 4 verse 9. Uh, to 10, which actually says, There remaineth therefore a rest to the people of God. Mm, For he that mm, is mm, entered mm. into his rest, he also has ceased mm. from his own works as God ceased from his. The yeah, God right. we are following yes. worked for six days. Mm -hmm. So let us be encouraged to work from Monday to Friday for six days. And when the Sabbath comes, yes. the God that we worship and the one that we follow, mm -hmm. he himself rested on a Sabbath, and that is what we should do. And that is yeah. why when we read the book of Exodus chapter 20, mm -hmm. It begins with the term remember. Yes. Because most people in the world, the pastor, have actually forgotten. When you look at the numbers in the world, mm -hmm. they have actually forgotten the Sabbath. People yes. are busy with families, with business, with chasing deals, even on Sabbath, and they have actually forgotten the Sabbath. Let yes. us not be among those people that will actually forget. Let us indeed remember. And the reason why it is remember, remember this is in Exodus 20, it's because the Sabbath began in Genesis mm. chapter 2. So God is telling us, immediately I created you. Yeah. Adam entered into the day of rest, and that is the Sabbath. Yeah. And in regards to the third angel's message, as I, as I pass it on, eh, mm. the third angel's message is worship him that created the heavens and the earth. Yes. Did you know that by the fact that we are worshiping on the Sabbath, it actually means that the God whom we worship mm -hmm. is actually the God who created the heavens and the earth. And that is why Satan, eh, he is totally against the Sabbath. Yes. And that's why we shall have things like Sunday law coming up. Because Satan knows these people that are worshiping God on Sabbath, worshiping God as per the terms and conditions, as per the rules, they are actually worshiping the true God. If we can just divide people outside the Sabbath, mm -hmm. whatever God they will worship, now that is another goal. Yeah. He will not be the Lord of the Sabbath. He will not be the creator of the heavens and the earth. So the third right. angel's message that we have is to go outside there and tell people, worship him that created the heavens and the earth. You're and right. how shall we tell them? For them to come into the ark of the Sabbath as we are in this last place. You're right. yeah, there's mm. something you've asked that is very mm. important, mm. whether, mm. Uh, and it's almost a, a, mm. a kind of like uh, circulating, whereby you ask, is the rest physical? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is it uh, mental? Is it, um, is it spiritual? spiritual? Uh, what kind of what kind of rest that uh, are we talking about? Yeah, and we are seeing that in telling them on what not to do mm -hmm. uh, in 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 in, in, uh, in Exodus uh, twenty. Yes. That uh, uh, and I think it's important for us to look at that. Uh, and I'm happy that Charles has mentioned that he tells them uh, remember, and then he, God I light or the scriptures I light on what not to do. That is um, in Exodus twenty, and and he says. Uh, it, it's very particular that it, you shall not labor or mm -hmm. do all your work. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, uh, on the seventh day, um, uh, let me read it uh, outrightly. Yes. It says, "Remember the Sabbath day." That is uh, Genesis twenty, verse eight to, uh, to 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 eleven. It says, "Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. holy yes. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but on the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord your God. In it you shall not do." you shall do no work. Mm. 
Yeah. So that's physical rest. This physical rest. Yes. Yes. That, and and then he says, Noah, your son, Noah, your daughter, Noah, your, your, mm -hmm. your, your, your male servant, Noah, your female servant, Noah, your, your cattle, Noah, your stranger. For in six days God made the heavens and the earth, and then he rested on the, on the Sabbath day. The rest that God is resting mm -hmm. is presupposed not to be physical. Not because he was tired. Yes. Yeah? So it is, it is, it's more of a, 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 a spiritual mm -hmm. break mm -hmm. to reflect on your, on your spiritual life. Yeah, that, 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 that you've been very busy, and this time now you're spending quality time to reconnect you're right. you, the spiritual aspect of it. And remember, w when you, you do all this, it's in the context of the mind, mm. that your mind is resting. Uh, and, and I'm happy that uh, when, um, when uh, Brother Charles was saying uh, that, that, that we shouldn't sleep on Sabbath, the question is, will sleep be beneficial on that time when you overdo it? Mm -hmm. So. Mm -hmm. So, so obviously, th do we need a lot of rest? Why is this suggesting yes. that we should have a, um, at least an average of eight hours, um, mm, mm -hmm. eight, eight hours of, eight of sleep? Of, of sleep, because we must be create a rhythm, mm. and God here has created a rhythm in us that work for six days, rest the seventh. Yeah. Work for six days, rest for the, the, the seventh. seventh. And right. the moment we break the rhythm. this rhythm then you're not able to function optimally. Yeah, Even right. our mind is not able to function optimally. Thank you, Pastor, for bringing that uh, anchor to it. So as we end this part of uh, the discussion and take a, a little break, we're saying that uh, from the book of Exodus that you've read of, now of remembering the Sabbath, and one is likely to ask, uh, so what should we remember? Number one, as you've clearly said, it's a reminder that there is a creator. Yes. There is God who created. It's also a reminder that we are not just anyone. We are created in a very, very special way. And then we are made in the image of the one that are actually created us. We also need to remember that there is so much more and the future in it that are, that, are, that are the aspect of salvation and, of course, giving us the hope and joy, as what you've said, reconnecting with God. Because from Sunday through Friday, maybe you've done so many things yes. out there, you've not had time to reconnect, to reflect, and to refresh your relationship with God. That is the day, that is the time. And then it needs to be, as, 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 as we've said, mm -hmm. the, as you said earlier, the issue of preparation. Mm -hmm. That when you finish the Sabbath, mm -hmm. you need to be looking forward to the yeah. next one. We're coming back to see how that is practical, how it's possible, especially in the contemporary world, whereby everything is running around and we do not have much time to reflect over these things. See you in a bit. Uh, welcome back as we continue to understand uh, Sabbath rest and how to rest. One thing that has come out from our first discussion is that this day of the week that was created since the beginning, it's a day for reflection, it's a day for regeneration, it's a day uh, in which we communion with God. But uh, in the contemporary society today, we are so busy, even on this very Sabbath day. So are we really experiencing the benefits of Sabbath as, as God had intended, Pastor, from the beginning? Uh, uh, thank you for that. I mean, um, today, like you said, the, the unlike, th you see, uh, let me track it back. Mm. At the beginning, God is creating Adam, Adam and Eve and putting them in a garden, which is controlled. Yes. Yeah? So they, 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 actu they don't have actually a lot of distractions because mm. it's a holy garden until sin comes. And then the other time we see, remember the Sabbath is in the Exodus when the children of Israel are on transit from, uh, from Egypt to the land of promise. Mm. And in the wilderness, the setting is not uh, also very friendly because it's a wilderness. And that's why you find that they are being taught on how to do it. Mm. Like uh, how, how should they collect the food? How should they congregate in the, in the, in the tents? What things should they do? Mm. Now, fast forward to today, we find that there is a work the work schedule, a very tight schedule of uh, waking up at five for most people, uh, having to leave the office um, at, uh, at, uh, at four or five, 
having to fight the traffic jam and uh, if you live in Rongai, having to get home very late. So the practical, uh, the practical keeping of the Sabbath requires more organization than ever before. If mm -hmm. you're not, if you if you have to keep your work where you live, work at five, and yes. you have to travel home. So practically, it's it, it's a challenge to to organize ourselves and keep the Sabbath and avoid because, uh, <coughs> like we we mentioned, it's from sunset. Sabbath is from sunset to sunset. Mm. Sunset of Friday, and we can find this in the book of Luke. Um, uh, Luke, uh, Luke 23, where Christ is uh, crucified. Yes. Luke 23, verse 50, that Christ is crucified on, um, on, a, on fri a Friday. On a Friday, he rests on <coughs> Sabbath, and yes. uh, Sunday being the first day, that's when he resurrects. Yes. So we are sure that the timelines of, um, of Sabbath are from Friday sunset, from sunset to Friday to Sabbath, to Sabbath sunset. sunset. And now, being sure that you are regulating your things so that around that time, you are not disengaged with the worship which uh, and the convocation that um, brother Charles, uh, the meeting that we're going to have the fellowship you're going to have at home is very very essential for us to keep the temple that god requires us as to you're right and, and having said that also the things that we do must be planned we must prioritize what is it that we need to do on that on that day mm. and i'm saying being a day that we're going to church then we need to practically say how can we prepare for church so that we arrive in church early so that we are able to study our quarterly lesson and i can give this practical example i have been trying to find whether people uh, genuinely mm. read the quarterly lesson for uh, example and it is a day for every study mm. that p is also part of our the preparation, preparation I that i did my lesson study for the week i did monday on monday i did uh Tuesday on Tuesday, Tuesday, I did yeah. that. When it, so God has created a practical way that we, we can keep check on whether we are doing some of the things that will help us. So mm -hmm. by, by the time we are coming to the Sabbath day, th that is um, Friday evening, <sighs> Yes. Uh, time to rest. Uh, Pastor, to pick on that, and maybe Charles, as you come in, I'm sure you've been thinking about this uh, deeply. And uh, yes, Pastor uh, said the issue of commandments coming in. But uh, 26 5 of Genesis actually reminds us that Abraham obeyed my voice and kept my charge and my commandments, my statutes, and my laws. This was way before mm -hmm. the Exodus. Because as you see, that Sabbath being, uh, was there since creation. True. And so we realize that uh, God is calling us to to actually observe what has been there before. Uh, thank you so much, Pastor. So, uh, Charles, on this issue of uh, Sabbath rest, especially in the contemporary society, mm -hmm. whereby we, we now have uh, COVID mm -hmm. uh, that are under regulations, government policy, that are only congregations up to a third, uh, in which case um, even some of the churches cannot even accommodate their third. Uh, and of course, we are yet to even to define this a third. But nevertheless, mm -hmm. there is then uh, uh, the expectation that the two thirds worship from home. Mm -hmm. uh, how best can we be able to, to have that worship experience, mm -hmm. rest experience, even for those that are at home? Yeah, so uh, what I've seen actually working is mm -hmm. that uh, because all of us um, cannot come and actually fit in church. Mm. So what has actually been done from the uh, way I've actually been able to see is that especially if you are living outside the co congested city, you can decide, let's go to Ngong, we visit so-and-so, let's go to Kitengela, three or four families, and uh, you meet. I've seen some youth groups also meeting. Today we are doing the Sabbath at your place. Today we are doing the Sabbath at your place. So that at least Sabbath after Sabbath you are not alone. Because of mm. course we are alone in the house. You will be tempted to sleep. You will be tempted to do all manner of casual things and watching television. Mm. So just to encourage your viewers that are at home and maybe you are not able to congregate. Mm. Just begin it yourself. Just call two or three of your friends that mm. you go to the same church. People that you are sure that are not COVID positive or have no signs, so that at least you can start the merry-go-round, yeah, as mm -hmm. they normally say in Chama, so that we are mm -hmm. always uh, ensuring that Sabbath after Sabbath, we are not uh, being outside the holy hours of the Sabbath mm -hmm. in terms of what you're saying. In fact, the Bible says uh, what we say on Sabbath, uh, what we think or everything we do must be in harmony with the Sabbath and mm. we in harmony with uh, keeping the Sabbath holy. So you don't meet and start talking about politics and start talking about business 
and start talking about uh, relationships, all manner of gossip about what is happening here, what is happening, the Sabbath should be a day. So when we meet with that aim of ensuring that we are indeed honoring and glorifying God, indeed it will be a blessing. Mm. In Isaiah 58 verse 13. Mm. Uh, my pastor, picking on this, uh, nowadays, of course, uh, there are times you could say on what you say, the do's and don'ts. Mm. Yeah. Not watching TV was one of them. Yeah. But today, because of online streaming, mm. we have to watch yes. TV or using another gadget. Mm. So how responsibly can we get uh, responsible? I mean, for us, even when we are worshipping from home, we can still be joined in spirit by other, I mean, with others. And still, by the end of that day, we say we have indeed had our Sabbath rest and our experience with God. We've had a communion with God. We've had a regeneration of our spirit with mm. God. Yes. I, I, I'm happy this is coming up. Uh, Isaiah 58 mm. has some counsel on almost what you'd say is like guidelines on mm. a, a bit of uh, giving us what is uh, pleasing and what is not. Uh, and it's, it's one of the texts that uh, pops up in my mind as you ask this question. Uh, Isaiah 58 verse, uh, verse 13 yes. and 14. And it says that if you turn away your food from the Sabbath, from doing your pleasure on my holy day, and call the Sabbath a delight, the holy day of the Lord honorable, and shall honor him, not doing your own ways, mm. N not finding your own pleasure, mm -hmm. not speaking your own words, yes. then you shall delight yourself in the Lord. And I will cause you to ride on the high hills of the earth and feed you with the heritage of Jacob. There are some ones in, in, uh, that are being repeated here, like not doing your own pleasure. Mm. Yeah? It, 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 so it, it, it calling it a delight. Yeah? Not doing your own ways. Yeah? not f seeking your own flesh, not speaking your own words. Yes. So the, the whole guidelines is that being led by the Holy Spirit, we will be able to see what is it that we will do to seek our own pleasure. So we need to be guided of the Spirit and say, why are we doing this? Are we doing it to connect with God? Mm -hmm. And so the reality is that in the technology world that we are living in today, yes. in this era, we might still be wanting to interact with others in meetings, on the Sabbath day where we can have um, Zoom or, or meetings that are virtual or even summons that are virtual, but we need to be very careful so that we don't, we watch the edges of Sabbath still, mm -hmm. even as we do the, 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 the virtual meetings or we have fellowships uh, and we have church streaming live. I, I have talked with a few young people and they say that today I can go to any church that I want. Mm. I, I, can, I can switch into New Life and if I find New Life is, is not... Um, uh, is, is, what is, I want. is not what I want. I can jump to Central Church. And if I find Central Church is not uh, pleasant, uh, to Lovington. Uh, Lovington. So the or any other church, or another church abroad. Place. I mean, yes. I can go to uh, uh, an American church. Yes. And, and so there's need for more discipline, just like you go into church, that once, once you tune into that channel, you're actually walking into a church and discipline yourself oh, yeah. to say that I have now gotten into church. Mm. Otherwise, then it will become uh, mm. confusing and mm. conflicting if you don't have some discipline yes. on how you can use the gadget yes. that we're using today. I, I like that part, but also just to exonerate, it's not just about young people saying that they're all going to another church. You realize that maybe some of the churches, in terms of uh, uh, technological advancement, they're yes. still not there. They're not able to stream in yes, the first place. Yes. And even if they did, it's not of good quality. Yeah. So I think with that, of course, it gives someone a leeway to look for where there is consistency, mm -hmm. where there is all those things. But most importantly is what you've said, guarding the ages of Sabbath. So meaning that you are consciously, spiritually aware yes. of uh, how to make Sabbath a delight. A delight. Yes. yes. Go on, Charles. And uh, in regards to freedom, remember the Sabbath is holy. Mm. So we also need to be holy. Mm -hmm. uh, Christ is always telling us, come all of us who are carrying heavy burdens. Yes. Yes. And one of the heaviest burdens is actually sin. Mm. Christ has actually promised us freedom. So that as you enter into the Sabbath of rest, the Sabbath of freedom, you are not actually carrying burdens of sins that you are actually struggling with. Christ mm. tells wow. us that mm. you shall know the truth and, and the truth shall, shall set, set you, you free. free. And today we have known that truth that Christ can bear every burden. He is actually the cornerstone. Mm. Even if all the burdens of this earth are put upon Christ, he is the cornerstone. He yes, will be able to bear all the weight and he will still be able to bear all those things. So yes. let us come to Christ. And uh, he has promised us freedom. 
from every sin to so that even as we come to Sabbath mm, and mm, as we come mm, to keep it, eh, yes. there is no sin that you're struggling with. You're right. There is no uh, gossip that you're struggling with. There is no abusive language that you're struggling with. Mm -hmm. We are not struggling with the sins of the flesh. Yes. So that even as you're within the holy hours of uh, the Sabbath, mm -hmm. we are feeling we have the rest in our hearts yes. uh, with the spiritual rest as you are speaking about. Mm -hmm. We are not feeling guilty. Yes. We are not feeling that we are people who are condemned, people who are not worthy. Mm -hmm. We are indeed feeling that we are indeed uh, set free and that God has been indeed gracious and to us. So, my dear viewers, I wish to encourage you that indeed come to Christ. He has promised to give us everything. Mm -hmm. He is the author and the finish of our faith. Christ himself is the Lord of the Sabbath. The Sabbath belongs to him. He started it. He established it. He is the one that actually began it. And when we come to him, indeed we shall find that rest. Yeah, and right. even when we meet in heaven, by the way, we are told that Sabbath after Sabbath, yeah? So one of the things that we shall take out of this earth, yeah? in the Garden of Eden, we came out with marriage and Sabbath, yeah? So from this earth, we shall forget everything, yeah? But right. Sabbath, we shall still go with it. In fact, we are You're told right. for seven days, we shall be traveling towards heaven. And when we are almost at the gate, yeah, the seven days will be over. The 30 minutes of silence in heaven. Because no angel will be in heaven. All of us, all the angels will have come to earth. There will be silence in heaven. So when you take 30 minutes, you divide one year is equal to 20. All that, it comes to around seven days. So when we are at the very doors, at the very gates of heaven, those who never kept the Sabbath will keep it there. So that we keep it and then we enter and see God. I see the way Pastor is looking at you mm. like this and yeah, you are yeah. giving us the uh -huh. divisions. <laughs> that is and now we shall take <laughs> that ride yeah, over honestly, there. You know, <laughs> <I'm listening laughs> yes. uh, the, 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 the Sabbath is, is such a celebration. Yes, mm. it yeah. is. Mm. And, I, it and, and I think it's, there's so many bodages that we can put to the mm. Sabbath. Even when you are saying don't do your pleasure. Mm. It doesn't mean that, oh, mm. Sabbath I should, it should be a straight jacket and mm. so that uh, I, 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 don't, I don't do anything. Mm. So... Th Things that are, are connecting us with God, yes. things that are helping us overcome mm -hmm. the burden and struggles mm -hmm. of sin mm -hmm. should be a praise. It's a day to sing, mm -hmm. it's a day to praise, it's a day to celebrate. Mm -hmm. In fact, that's why I, I think in the interpretation of uh, Matthew 1 uh, Corinthians, I mean 13, 1, 2, 3, will tell you that uh, we don't just keep the Sabbath because it is the day God wants us to observe, yes. but it's because mm -hmm. we love him. Yes. And it's sort of a response. Yes. When he says that the Sabbath is made for man and not man for Sabbath, yes. it's we need then to respond to that great love and see it as a moment of... Um, sort of renewing and having quality and pastor yeah, i know you know about quality relationships yes. having quality relationship with the godhead amen and that is when it can actually be a rest mm. now pastor help us to close this uh, part of the this uh, the, the the sabbath uh co conversation um god has a church yeah. But even on this very day, the Sabbath, nowadays there are other denominations that also a fellowship on a, on the Sabbath day, yeah. mm -hmm. and they're not necessarily Adventists or Seventh Day Adventists. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, what would you say about that? I know people have freedom to make a choice, but then what you just talk about God's choice and God's church. Uh, um, I'm happy that this is coming up because, and uh, Charles alluded to it when he talked about John. John uh, 4, verse 24. Mm -hmm. Knowing the truth. The, uh, the, the worshiping the Lord in the spirit. Oh, in the and, spirit in, and, and truth. And the, and the truth. Uh -huh. That the foundation of our worshiping God should be based on truth. And Christ says, I am the, 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 the way, the, the truth, truth and, and, the and the life. So even as we talk about resting in Christ, mm -hmm. which has been our theme for this, um, for this, for this quarter, is saying that the only source of truth, I mean, th true rest, is embracing the truth in Christ himself. Mm -hmm. And Christ, uh, Christ, when he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life, we can only find him in the scriptures. Mm. He is the word of God. Yes. Yeah, he, he, which, which uh, John is saying, that the word was, became flesh and dwelt among us. Yes. So in understanding Christ and who he is, mm -hmm. then we will, we will understand what Christ requires of us. And it's not going to judge, because mm -hmm. Christ says, I have other... Other, other sheep who are not in, in my fold. Mm -hmm. So there could be people who are not worshipping on Sabbath, mm. but they have not gotten that truth and um, embraced it. Yes, but God still right. loves them you're right. and cares for them. Mm -hmm. So it's not good for us, any Christian, to judge the other, mm -hmm. yeah. or any denomination to judge the other denomination, mm -hmm. or any religion to, to judge the other religion. Mm. But we should know that Christ is the only connecting link mm. for us to God, and I think that is that is a, a, a fact. You're right. That no one can come to the Father apart from 
through me. Mm. And in, um, in coming to Christ then and sitting at his feet, mm. like we're doing at the feet of Jesus, yes, yes. then we, we understand some Bible facts that reveal who Christ is. Mm -hmm. I was born in a, in a, I was not born Adventist myself. Yes. I was born in a, the northern, um, I mean the eastern part of, uh, of Kenya, mm. where there are not many Seventh-day seven Adventists. And I remember when, um, when, I, when I was starting to embrace that Adventism as a, a Seventh-day Adventist, I would go back home and they would say, oh, which church is this? I mean, so it was it was very new. But mm. today, if you go back to the northeastern, yes. I mean, to the eastern part of uh, of Kenya, there are many people who are worshiping. Oh, yes. So after people know the truth yes. and they embrace it, right. they get to know the truth. No longer are the days when you used to say that the, the Seventh Adventist Church is for the Western. Uh, yes, the, the Western or as uh, or, or the, the sec uh, as, as, a, a certain as, section as of the population. You're right. It, it just mm. finding what. Yes. Are in the Bible and we embrace it seems it. to be burning with something yes. that help us understand yes. this. Uh, when they uh, actually God is the one who came up with the name Seventh Day Adventist. Yes. If you go back to the pioneers. Mm. And at one point uh, Ellen G. White actually said, if you are teaching that the Seventh Day Adventist church is Babylon, you are mistaken. Mm. There is no more moving out. We don't have now another exodus to move into the church. So I wish to encourage uh, all of us to know that uh, we are in the right church. Uh, don't start thinking that now there is another church you need to go and start yeah. or another church that should be started. This is the church mm -hmm. yeah, that yeah, the Lord has actually given. Mm. There is no any other exodus that is expected of us. We are to remain here. There is one body yes. and the body is actually the church. There is only one church. So let us, all of us, move together as a team. Even if you are in, uh, in not good terms with the elders of this church or the elders of this other place, don't think now this is the time to be like Sunday pastors and start all your man of churches as a person. Let us know that this is the church. It is one body. The spirit of prophecy tells us there is no moving out. And let us work together, all of us. But to, of course, when we come now to selfishness, we want to take advantage of the tithe and the offering to merchandise the grace of Christ. The devil will tell you a man of ideas mm -hmm. of what you need to start your own church down there. So to let, us not, be tempted. <laughs> <laughs> let, us, let us not be tempted. Let us not be tempted into such issues oh, and, you're right. and so on. Yeah. Yeah, uh, so, uh, mm. first I think as we take a break on this, mm. it, it's important, and I'm happy you bring it, you bring, brought it out, mm. that uh, God has a church, and has a church for his end time. Mm. And uh, it's important that uh, the truth speak for itself, mm. and the truth is the word of God. Mm. So that even if you are, uh, yes, worshipping on this day, which is the, um, on the seventh day, yeah. but uh, you are not necessarily in the Seventh-day Adventist church, yeah. it's time truth spoke to you as well yeah. and every other person because as Pastor you said earlier uh, God has many other sheep outside of the fold yes. that he needs to be into the fold mm. and so we openly invite you to take a walk into the scriptures and find for yourself truth and make and let the spirit of God help you make that decision to come in don't come in because of us or because of someone but because Christ has actually spoken to your heart and he has convicted you and yes, you make that right choice. We all belong to him. We are created. We are equal in his, in his eyes. His grace is sufficient to all of us. Let us make that decision based on the principles that Christ is giving us. We take a short break. When we come back to conclude, we will be able to see what else and how else can we experience true rest on this day so that it's actually a delight. Uh, welcome back as we continue to um, look into the scriptures and of course how practically we can be able to keep our Sabbath and of course experience the part of resting. Now uh, my, my, my panelists here have a few questions that I want us to, to look at. Uh, in the commandment we, 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 we read earlier about um, keeping of the Sabbath, we realize that even the strangers in our own gate sure. yes. ought to be partakers of the Sabbath. Mm. But then we realize that, uh, and Pastor, you might speak on this with authority, that uh, even us Seventh-day Adventists, we have workers in our houses, True. our house helps, mm. our house boys, mm. but we leave them at home to do work and to prepare things when we go to church. Yes. 
during camp meetings we are asked to go with everyone mm -hmm. and other kind of things why is this not practical and how can we who worship on sabbath at the sabbath keepers extend this blessing to others so that they can actually learn how god is holy and this day being holy for him so that then it's not for a few even in a homestead yeah uh, and, and i like the, the word family mm -hmm. And uh, Charles alluded to it when he was saying that the institution that God has created that are supposed to perpetuate his kingdom, mm -hmm. all his pleasure, mm -hmm. family being one of them and Sabbath being the next, yes. that in the family God wants us to, uh, to establish a situation where his love is being mm -hmm. manifested. Exactly. That a family is an institution whereby when well done, it will show what heaven is like. Mm -hmm by the way we treat each other, by the way we love each other, by the way we forgive each other, as we've been saying, and we find true rest. Similarly, in observing and keeping the Sabbath, we will perpetuate the love that God has for us. Mm -hmm. And so the emphasis that all the people who are in our, in our gate should experience the love, the rest that comes with the Sabbath observance is, God is putting it, I mean the Bible is putting it as a, as a, a prerequisite, mm -hmm. that if you have a, a worker in your place, not only at home, even those who are, who are, who are, who are running. Companies. Who have companies. Uh, yes, yeah. you, you are in charge and your company you, is Your running. company is running. Yes. So technically God is saying that uh, serve others and that's the other thing that is coming. Connect with others, see them, that they make it, it to the kingdom mm. as you connect with God, mm. help others connect. So it You're will right. not be complete. Mm -hmm. And also the other thing that I, I, I get here is that in helping other people keep the Sabbath, we also learn what God intends for us. Yes. That, that God intends for us to understand him. Mm -hmm. And in telling the, the children of Israel to do this, he is telling you, I am using you as channels mm. yeah, of my love. You're right. I am using you as, a, as an example of what I would do if it, I was put mm -hmm. in that. So go tell people this is how to keep the Sabbath. You're right. And in our modern, modern, um, modern uh, world today, our family should be the background. Mm. We, in our family, we are keeping the Sabbath. In our place of work, we are keeping the Sabbath. So we, we actually speak it and it becomes yes. part of our life. And, and we speak about it as God's blessing, yeah. as God's gift, and not as an obligation. Precisely. And so I ask the viewer out there, and uh, we, we, we are open to your comments. How do you keep your Sabbath, especially during these times of COVID? What has changed? What is now better? How do you feel connected? Is it, again, still, do you feel it as an obligation or you are experiencing God's blessings? I think those are the experiences we could be sharing. And uh, for those who will tune in and, of course, listen to this on the YouTube, our YouTube channel, A Moment at Jesus Feet, you could always give your comments there and through the mobile l number you're seeing on the screen, text in so that we can be able to know and share with others what has worked for you mm -hmm. and how you feel it make you uh, experience that delight. Uh, brother... Um, Charles, remember even during the times of Jesus, uh, Christ himself, he could share <coughs> the blessings of the Sabbath. But then there was some level of hostility and, of course, uh, others could totally ignore, uh, even when Christ is being the example. Now, those people aside, how can us today follow Christ uh, and, and ensure that he's the best example in, in, when it comes to keeping the Sabbath and experiencing the rest? Yes, Christ is indeed our example. Mm. He is the one that we are actually following. Mm, yeah. mm, mm, mm. And let no one discourage you because of yeah. the Sabbath. Mm. The owner of it is Christ. Exactly. He himself is the Lord of the Sabbath. Mm -hmm. So everybody understands he, he is actually uh -huh. under him. Because yes. Christ is the origin of the Sabbath. We do not know who is the Lord of Sunday. Mm. Yeah, but we are sure <coughs> the Lord of the Sabbath yes. is actually Christ. In fact, Luke 2, 28. Mm. Yes. I think he says that. So it is actually on a Sabbath. Christ mm. is at the pool of Beth SDA. <coughs> mm -hmm. He is actually at that pool of yes. Bethesda. Someone, when says Beth Beth the SDA. He yeah. is actually at that pool. <laughs> There is a man here that has actually been on this pool for 38 years. Yes. And this man, when Christ actually arrived at the pool, he of course searched everyone. Yes. His eye could see everyone. And he realized there is one case here. It is a desperate case. This guy has <coughs> been here for 38 years. And just to put that what it means. Eh? So Christ, by the time he ended his ministry, he was actually 33 years. So let's assume that Christ is 33 years at the pool of Beth SDA. So this man, before Christ was born, five uh -huh. years, the that man had been there. Yes. So five years before Christ is born, that man is still there. Christ is born, 
Eh? He goes to primary school, that man is still there. He goes to secondary school, that man is still there. He goes to university, that mm, man is still mm, there. Mm. Yeah, if it is in our context, now he would look for a job, all the way looking for marriage. After that three years, the man is still there. Yeah, that eight years, the man is still there. So Christ looked at that pool. Many people needed to be healed, but so this is the only case that really needs. And so Christ immediately went to the man, and he actually asked the man, do you want to be healed? Yeah, and we thank God that this man, eh, although he had never met Christ, he never knew that he could heal, the man actually believed. He actually told Christ, ah, yes, I want to be healed, but I have no man to carry me. Remember mm. there was a pool where an angel would come and stand, the first person to enter would actually. So people who had sick people would go with, the, with their sick people there. As soon as the water is started, some would just drop the person. The first person to enter is actually healed. So this man had no one for obvious reasons. Maybe the people had come for the first year, the second year, and everybody has burdens of his own family. Mm -hmm. He has children, Maisha mm -hmm. uh, everyday living, and mm -hmm. they decided now mm -hmm. <laughs> they went because of everyday normal living. So Christ came, asked the person, do you want to be healed? And the person says, uh, uh, nobody is there to get me. Then Christ tells the person, take up the bed, walk and go. Yeah? The person did not start asking Christ, by the way, <laughs> you are telling me to take up my bed, can't you see I'm sick? How, how will and I, I be and I've been here for 38 years. I've been here for 38 years. How are you telling me? Mm. But we thank God for this man. Yes. He actually took Christ's words. He actually took it by faith. He never wasted his only opportunity of being healed. He actually took it by faith, started taking up the bed, and hiya, he found that he has woken up and is going. And up to that, yeah. I feel that this yes. man experiences mm. rest. And it is yeah. actually yeah. So yeah, it's on our Sabbath. Yes, yes. So <coughs> physically, mm. he, he, now the pain mm. of the sickness is mm. gone. Mm. So he experiences physical mm. rest. Mm. Even on a Sabbath, mm. he experiences the miracle of healing. Mm. And I think those are the things we should look forward to mm. on a Sabbath. Yes. That's true. Because God mm. is saying here in mm. um, uh, Mark 2, 28, mm. therefore the Son of Man mm. is also the Lord of the, of the Sabbath. Sabbath. Mm. So on this day, if we must know how to mm. experience rest, mm. we go to the master design of sabbath mm -hmm. who is yeah. jesus himself what do you have to say about there's that? something i read here um it's a quote on on, on, on this uh, study it says mm -hmm. a sabbath should take us out of ourselves uh -huh. and our too. own selfishness mm -hmm. and cause us to think more about others mm -hmm. and others needs mm -hmm. than about ourselves yes. and our needs mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and and that's christianity mm -hmm that Christianity should be able to think about the needs of the other people. Yes. And when I was looking at this, actually I went outside the Sabbath hours themselves. Mm. Do we do good uh -huh. on outside the Sabbath hours or are we limited? Mm. Yeah. Look at the needy people who are around us mm. in the streets. Walk any streets, mm. there are people who are needy. Mm. In our communities as needy people, mm -hmm. do we reach them out like Jesus did? Mm so that we can meet their needs yeah, right. and help them or is it only the yeah. sabbath hours that are in question yes. because technically we might be saying don't do this on sabbath but we don't do it even on these other days exactly the, the pharisees could have been concerned mm. about jesus healing on sabbath mm. but they not even heal on a, on another day yes yeah. so is our christianity or meeting the needs mm. of the people mm. only question on sabbath or are we able to do it on the other day in fact, uh, mm -hmm. when you say that, something that is flowing in my mind is that really there are many ways that God and Christ wants us to understand and uh, observe Sabbath. Yeah. And one of it is when you do a good deed, yes. like what Christ used to do, lifting the burden of sickness, yes. of sin yes. on Sabbath, yes. healing, yes. that that actually what we need to do to others to ensure yeah. that we visit yes we pray for yeah. Yeah. we lift a burden out, out of someone we yes. become a blessing to needs, someone yes. exactly mm. Mm. on this day just like of course all other days mm -hmm. and uh, but it's not the only day that we, we have to be in suit yeah. as someone says on on saturdays yeah. Do, don't think everyone in suit is going to work. Yeah. Some are Adventist yeah, <laughs> going to <laughs> church. <laughs> but then yeah. how do we lift up others? Mm. First, I think that's the question yeah. from Sunday mm. through Friday. Yes. So the man actually takes the bed. Yes. And he starts working with the bed. Yes. He meets the church board or yes. the Sanhedrin, yes. some of the elders. Mm. They ask him, my brother, why are you carrying your bed and it is on a Sabbath? On a Sabbath. Yeah, you are carrying burdens, eh? Uh, loads and it is on a Sabbath, goods. And they, the man actually says very innocently, 
the person who has actually healed me. You know, the healing is the biggest miracle. Yes. Uh, he has told me even to carry this thing. Eh? So <laughs> carrying is the cheapest thing to do. Yeah. The real healing for the eight years my brothers have been there. Yes. Of course, they never went to that. Eh? But the gravity of the issue right. and the weight of the issue was mm. there. The healing that no man can do. It's yes. only God that can do. The same person has told me to carry the bed. Mm. And so the man never knew that it was actually Christ. Remember, he was always grounded there. So uh, at one point he went to the temple. Christ also met him now in the temple. Because Christ, of course, after healed, as the person was picking up the bed, eh, by the time he was standing, Christ had already disappeared among yes. the people. So when Christ actually went and found him in the temple and told him, now, my brother, you have been healed. Eh? Ensure that you sin no more. Of course, that tells us the man had gotten there because of sin. Least the worst thing comes unto you. So even as ensure, let us not sin. Eh? Sin will land you into prison. It can land you into an early death. It can cause your bones to be broken when you are found in wrong areas. A panga can slash you. Sin is very bad. So Christ tells the man, ensure that you do not sin anymore. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then the man quickly rushes. Oh, let me tell you, Ed Elder. The person who healed me, the greatest miracle, is actually called Christ. He is the one. And the Jews actually sought to kill Christ even the more because he had done these things on a Sabbath. Right. During those days, I know the pastor can tell us in the school of biology, when they go deeper, they are told that, among the Jews, even carrying an handkerchief, it was an issue. You should not do anything. Even the walking distance had to be limited so that you don't go very you far. don't swear. Yes, but Christ tells in response to that, which we are discussing, the book of Matthew chapter uh, 12, verse 11 to 12. King James Version, it actually says, And he said unto them, What man shall be there among you that shall have one sheep? And if it fall into a pit on the Sabbath, he will not lay hold on it and lift it out. How much then is a man better than a sheep? Mm. Wherefore, yeah, wherefore, it is lawful to do well on Sabbath days. Right. So Christ is telling it's us it is well. good. It is lawful. It is within the boundaries of keeping the Sabbath to do good things on a Sabbath. Mm. To travel, to do good, to visit people in hospitals, to feed the, the hungry, to do all these things that are in doing good. And he tells them, all of you have sheep. If your mm. sheep falls on a ditch, you will, you will not say, oh, stay on that ditch. Today is the Sabbath. And Christ was very deliberate on that. I found a man that uh, needs help on a Sabbath. He is broken, that mm. he tears, I healed the pastor. And even went ahead to say, even some of you have cows at home. When it is lunchtime on a Sabbath, eh, you go very quickly and put the water mm. so that the cows can drink the water and you put the, the mm. food there. Mm. So how much more that should you feed people, should you do good things on a Sabbath? Right. So let us know two things we should do on a Sabbath. Things that are good and of helping others and things, of course, that are to the honor and the glory of God. When you carry yeah. speakers in church on a Sabbath, when you arrange seats, when you feel that you're in church on a Sabbath and you're feeling umekuja kazi, you've come to work. Mm. Like uh, it was uh, in other issues where we were deacons and we used really to feel that we have you, come, to, come to work, work. Yeah. <laughs> other than to worship. Let us know that it is lawful to do good things on a Sabbath for the That's honor and glory of God mm. and for helping others. Thank you so much. Mm. That was so profound. Mm. Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking that mm. God is saying that this will be a mm. sign between mm. you and me. Yes, mm. yes, yes. And, and, mm. and, and, and it being a sign means mm. that uh, it's like a label. Mm. You're right. And the lesson is alluding to a, a, mm. a, a, an illustration that re I really like. When, um, the, 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 during the World War, when the Germans were fighting with the England, and the, England, the, the English, mm. they decided to remove all the signs. Mm. So they can confuse, you know, without this is mm. Kenyatta Avenue yes, and, yes. and all that, you don't know what Nairobi is. Or you don't know what a town is. Mm. So they removed all the marks of the the roads. Mm. All the signs. All the signs. Yeah, which, uh -huh. yeah. And they're saying this, that this is how they won. Because the, the, the enemies were not able to track them. And the Bible is saying that God has given us, in, in uh, that is in, um, in uh, uh, Exodus 13. Yes. V v that one verse Th 13 yes that god has given us sabbath as a sign mm -hmm. that we are his people mm -hmm. and he is our god meaning that when we observe mm -hmm. the sabbath mm -hmm. we are we are we are actually connecting with god and other people are seeing mm -hmm. that sign mm -hmm. signs are supposed to validate mm -hmm. yeah yes without a, a sign then that's not a valid yeah. so by obeying god mm -hmm. we are actually validating our christianity all our our life mm. that we belong to God. You're right. And Christian then should be challenged to ask. Uh, as Christian, we should be challenged to ask ourselves: Are we doing things the way God wants us to do? And this is especially because there are many people who question which is the true day of uh, mm. of rest. Mm. It requires us to study yes. the Word of God so that we can see whether we belong 
to God or whether mm. we worship him. Because actually, the mentioning of this day, then it's because th there is a special blessing on, yeah. it, on this day. Yes. And as you say, darling, in Genesis uh, chapter 2, it's a... Uh, a day that is sanctified. And yeah. so when God sanctifies the day, he also sanctifies the people. Yeah. The verse you've just mentioned, Exodus 31, verse 13, the Lord God says, Speak also to the children of Israel, mm -hmm. saying, Surely my Sabbaths mm -hmm. you shall keep, for it is a sign between me and you throughout mm -hmm. your generations that you may know that I am the Lord yeah. that sanctifies you. you yes. So just like and you said earlier that uh, the Sabbath is holy, mm -hmm. we ought to be holy. Mm -hmm. The Sabbath is sanctified. We ought to be sanctified. But you sure. see, we cannot make ourselves holy. Neither yeah. can we sanctify ourselves. So by yes. observing, yes. we know that uh, we know whom we are actually worshipping is the one that sanctifies us. Yes. And I think that also then means mm -hmm. Sabbath reminds us of a, a, a day that brings a relationship and it renews and it regenerates our relationship with the sanctifier to the one who makes us pure, mm. to the one who makes us holy. Yes, yes. in fact, Sabbath uh, reminds us that uh, in the same way that God has made a day holy, mm. that same God is also able to make us holy. That You're is right. why you shall keep the Sabbath because I'm the Lord that sanctifies you. Yes. In the same way that I've sanctified and made the Sabbath holy, yes. when you come to me, it is in the same way that I will make you holy. And I just wish to amplify that. Uh, Exodus 31, verse uh, 16, 17. <coughs> King James Version it actually says, Wherefore the children of Israel shall keep mm -hmm. the Sabbath to observe the Sabbath throughout their generations. For perpetual covenant 17. It is a sign between me and the children of Israel forever. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, and on the seventh day rested and was refreshed. It is a sign. Some of us are not born Adventists. Mm -hmm. In Sunday system, we have a millions of millions of churches. People beginning churches wherever they want. Yeah, mm. Everybody is using the same Bible. They are preaching the same God. We are going to the same heaven. But when we come into the book, God is actually telling us the sign of where God is. Mm. Yeah? It's not a ribabashanda and a lot of music. Yeah, And a lot of uh, fasting and a lot of prayer and a lot of jumping, jumping. And a lot of uh, all manner of issues that people do on television and radio. False miracles, some may be, may be true, we don't know. The sign of where God is, is actually the Sabbath. the Sabbath. So for you that is looking for church, for you that is looking to join membership into a place where God is, God is actually saying it is a sign between me and the children of Israel together. And for some of us who came to the truth, this is the sign that you are actually looking for. Yeah. If you want to know where an airport is, is you look for aeroplanes where they are parked, where there is a parking for airport, yes. and uh, that's where you'll find the airport or oh. the planes mm -hmm. are. If you want to find where God is, look at the Sabbath, that is where He is. You're right. Mm -hmm. Thank you so, so much. Mm -hmm. Pastor, uh, um, mm -hmm. you can crown it off. On, yeah, there's uh, something that I read. I, I, I love some of the mm -hmm. statement. It says that, uh, and I appreciate what uh, Brother Charles is saying, that, uh, that God's Sabbath is a constant reminder of mm. our origins, mm. that's where oh we yes, came oh yes. from, mm. our liberation, mm. yes. our destiny, mm. and our responsibility. You're right. And, and I thought this is the responsibility to the people who are outcast, mm. the people who are marginalized, mm -hmm. the people who are different. Mm from us yes and and so that we can embrace god who is love then and love mm -hmm. like he loved and it's it's it, the constant then reminder is that it's coming every other mm. seven days mm -hmm. and god knew that we are likely to forget mm. and so he says after every six days yes remember mm. re and this becomes a perpetual covenant for yes. us mm. until christ comes and it's good to know to also know that even in heaven we shall have it's it's in heaven that we shall have total rest and we shall still keep yes the sabbath. the sabbath thank you so much we come to the end with these two quotations the first quotation i pick it from uh uh ellen white uh, my life today uh, she says according to the fourth commandment the sabbath was dedicated to rest and the religious worship all secular employment was to be suspended but works of mercy and benevolence mm -hmm. were in accordance with the purpose of the Lord. What mm -hmm. you said, lawful mm -hmm. uh, work. They were not to be limited by time or place. Mm -hmm. To relieve the afflicted, to comfort the sorrowing is a labor of love that does, not ho that does honor to God's holy day. Those are things that we must do. Lastly, testimonies for the church, uh, book 8, chapter 32, uh, page 198. Uh, it says the Sabbath is a sign of, of the relationship <coughs> existing between God and his people. A sign that they are his obedient subjects, that they keep holy his law. 
The observance of the Sabbath is the means ordained by God of preserving a knowledge of himself and distinguishing himself and of distinguishing between his loyal subjects and the transgressors of his law. It's wow. one thing that separates. Mm -hmm. And so I encourage you to dig deep into the scriptures to be able to know that this day called the Sabbath is not just another day. It's a day that will be able to actually distinguish between God's loyal subjects and the transgressors of his law. And his law is holy, his law is perfect, his law is righteous, his law is not a burden. May God bless us as we experience the true Sabbath rest. Close it with a word of prayer. Let us believe and pray. Our eternal King, we want to thank you for giving us this uh, moment to open the scriptures and to study your word. I want to thank you for helping us to discuss and elaborate and uh, bring out issues regarding to Sabbath. Lord, I want to thank you because you created us and we are yours. Help us to know how to walk in your ways. Sabbath is a day of worship. Help us that whenever we come to worship you, we'll be connected with you. Father God, I want to pray for a viewer who could be watching today and is struggling to know the true Sabbath. Father, open their eyes. Touch them that they may know. I am praying for the viewer who has struggles with observing and keeping the Sabbath. Lord, give them victory. Mm. Father, I pray for the family that could be struggling with challenges that this message will draw them to you and they'll be able to see your light and come to true. Thank you for inviting us to Christ who is our only rest. And as we embrace him, he is telling us, come unto me or we will labor and I have a little and I'll give you rest. Thank you for inviting us to the rest and we pray that moving forward, that Sabbath will truly be our day of rest when we can meet you and interact with you and worship you in spirit and truth until you return your kingdom. Thank you for hearing to our prayer and continue to bless us and to guide us for we pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. and amen. 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 I thank you so much for staying tuned throughout the, this program and also watching other uh, programs on Hope Channel Kenya. As we always say, mm -hmm. share this and uh, with, with your neighbors, with your relatives, with your brothers and sisters. Let the word of God be preached and do something, play a role uh, to ensure that this light goes into someone else and lights their families as well. May you stay blessed as we look forward to the next other discussions mm -hmm. and God bless you as well, even as you continue to uh, ask him to help you know how to experience true Sabbath rest. Till then, see you. Amen.